So you might wonder, well, what's the purpose of the mocking spirit? Mocking spirits, sometimes, they're like kind of like guarding demons. They guard. They're, they're deflecting, right? They're standing in between you and the strong man. Or they're standing in between you and other demons that are standing in front of the strong man. There, people can have layers of demons. Before you get to the strong man, there can be demons here, demons here, demons here. And sometimes they won't, they'll come out in the order they went in. And sometimes they'll come out in the opposite order of which they came in. However God wants to do it. However God wants to do it. But there's always a strong man in the realm of deliverance. A strong man is usually last to come out. The strong man isn't necessarily the first to enter. The ruling demon, the, the worst demon that somebody has is the, is the strong man. That's the one that's really, really has a strong hook. It's not necessarily the first one to come in. So how the order in which God wants to do deliverance is up to God. Right? He knows. <clears throat> it's kind of like unraveling a knot. You ever get a knot in your shoelace and it's like, or in your necklace, and it's like the necklace is even worse because it's like gold or silver, and it's really hard to get undone. And if you're not careful, you'll tie tie the knot tie the knot tighter instead of looser loosening it. That's the way it is with deliverance. So if we're not led by the Spirit, if we go by head knowledge alone, we could actually hinder someone's deliverance instead of helping them along. So we have to be led by the Holy Spirit. You, you've got to keep hearing me say that. You got to remember that. You're seeing a, you always see a lot of deliverance in this church. Why? Because it's a mantle of deliverance on this church. So a mocking spirit may be guarding a spirit of fear or a spirit of rejection, or the person may have a mocking spirit. They may just have a mocking spirit. They may be, be, have it on the inside. The mocking spirit can come from the outside to influence someone during deliverance. They don't have a mocking spirit, but it's influencing from the outside, or the mocking spirit can be in them. So here's six ways that mocking spirits accomplish their purpose. Six ways. Uh, number one, mocking spirits seek to mislead you. <clears throat> mocking spirits seek to mislead you. They seek to mislead you in the deliverance session by giving you false information that, that, that takes you down a rabbit trail. Because they want to deflect. They want to deceive misleading is deceiving, essentially. They want to lead you in the wrong direction. They want to take you off the scent of the stronger demons. Does that make sense? So that's why we don't talk to demons. Now, <clears throat> Jesus talked to demons one time. He told, he said, what is your name? The, the, the demon said, I, my name is Legion, for we are many. You saw that one time, one time. And I believe the reason why we saw that one time is so that we would know by scripture, that people can have 10,000 demons. You didn't see, it's not necessary to have a long conversation with demons. The, the extent of the conversation, most of the time, the greater majority of the time is come out. That's the, because demons are going to lie to you. Why in the world would you trust information that demons give you? Sometimes, they, they're, sometimes they're compelled to tell the truth. In certain circumstances, there may be times when God will allow you to do that or lead you to do that, but it's rare. How are you going to trust the information? You get, it's like a 50-50 crapshoot. Okay, well, maybe it's right, maybe it's wrong. It's just not, it's just not, um, it's just the, the mocking spirit is buying time. The mocking spirit is just delaying the deliverance, just buying time, just trying to derail you, trying to take you off the scent of the major demon because it's distracting. Mocking spirits seek to distract you. Mocking spirits seek to distract you from the real demon you need to cast out. So you can spend an entire deliverance session, if you're not careful, if you don't know what you're dealing with, you could spend an entire deliverance session just dealing with that mocking spirit. If you know what you're dealing with, you can deal with it swiftly. But if you don't know what, that, what it is, it'll derail the whole thing. Because you're like, you'll be wrestling with this thing and you might not even know what it is. You're calling all kind of things, come out, come out, come out. If you don't discern what it is, it's not coming out. A lot of demons, not all, but many times, especially in the context of deliverance ministry, the demons, they make you call their name. They won't leave. Just say, all right, every demon in this person, come out now. That sometimes will work. Most of the time, you have to call it by name. You know, Jesus called, called he said, Lazarus, come out of the grave. If he hadn't said that, every dead body would have rose up out of the grave. 
But as far as us, we need to call the name out. We need to discern what it is most of the time. Most of the time. We can call out spirits that entered through activities. So every spirit that entered through, pick your anger. I'll pick something more benign. I was going to say something more, more whatever. You know, there's a certain false deliverance minister, and people are calling out every spirit that came in through so-and-so. That sometimes will work. But for the most part, you need to, you need to name them. If the mocking spirit wants to distract you from naming them, 